Welcome to the shop. I'm Jared and this is Wrench Every Day. And in front of me are several tool sets that we've reviewed in the past. First off, underneath in this tool chest is my $1,000 kind of starter mechanics tool set where I went out and spent $1,000 at Harbor Freight to try to get everything that I would need as a starting mechanic. About 650,000 of you have watched this series on uh, me just unboxing it. So we're ready to give you a six months review on that tool set. Also in front of me is the Gear Wrench and Harbor Freight kind of crash kit portable tool sets that we reviewed that had about $115 difference in cost, but had the same number of tools. And they've both been used a fair bit. So I'm able to give you a honest review of these rather than just our first impressions. So let's go ahead and get these tool sets taken care of first so we can get them out of our way and we can talk a little bit more about this $1,000 toolbox that is uh, below them. So first, both of these tool sets took a trip with us for filming Car Trek Season 7 and Season 8 where uh, they got a little bit of use. We had to fix a couple of the cars along the way. Surprise, surprise. Um, but they both performed very well. And Again, as tool sets go, they're fantastic. This one I actually had out with me in the field while I was working on that case tractor that I recently got started and working again. It's just really convenient to carry with. Uh, it's also very convenient to dump a bucket full of water into when you forget it's underneath the bucket when you're trying to get the water out. Oh. <laughs> All on my tools. Just real quick, we'll go over them. I'll pop this one up. Pop this one open. There we, there we go. Um, there's really only two things that I'm going to complain about this. Uh, one of them is not the tool set's fault at all. Um, my 13 millimeter is gone, Mr. Bullion. I think it's still in your uh, in your car that you sold. And we don't have anymore. Thankfully, it's not a very expensive wrench to uh, replace. There, it's just a great simple tool kit. You're able to carry it with you. These Allen wrenches are a nightmare to kind of reform into the exact size that they need to be to close. Uh, it's kind of frustrating to get them in. Otherwise, my opinion of it still stands. It's a great buy. You're able to throw it around. And while I'm not saying just over $100 is cheap, you're not as hurt if someone decides to uh, permanently walk off with it. It's been a great tool set. It travels incredibly well. You're able to uh, throw it in your truck, in the back, in your trunk. Uh, it will bounce around. And for the most part, I've not had an issue with this thing popping open, losing tools, things getting unorganized. That's where this gear wrench is not done very well. It seemed every time we stopped somewhere, we had gear wrench tools all over the place. The uh, fronts, they pop open, the tools fall out. Uh, while it was traveling in the back of a car, it did a little bit better because it didn't have room to move. But even then, you have sockets that will just bounce around and just get all over the place. There's not a positive locking for any of these sockets. They slide around a fair bit in there, uh, bounce around. The quarter inches, they're always traveling and on an adventure. The other problem we ended up having with this box, unlike the Pittsburgh, is uh, when it rains on it. This thing, it still has water in it. I will say the tools, whew, that, that is a smell, you know, um, couple month old water. Whew, we'll go ahead and close that. Um, I didn't smell that before. That's, that's fresh. Nothing like three month old Florida rainwater. All right. Um, the tools are obviously very quality in the sense that they've been exposed to a lot of water and they just sat in a lot of water and they've not rusted yet. One thing that's happened is the 10 millimeter ratcheting wrench has gone from this and it's a little bit more difficult to replace that. Um, I think I saw it was $11 compared to like, I think for $11 you buy a whole new wrench set here on the Pittsburgh side. So when it came to crash kits, we both agreed that kind of the fit and finish, this was the nicer of the boxes, not by many points but the best value was in this Pittsburgh toolbox. I still say that. I still feel like this is the much better buy, especially if you're gonna put it in your car. Too many of these tools went flying around and it did not travel very well. It wasn't resistant to water. It's full of water still. So buying a travel kit, I would go to Harbor Freight and get this Pittsburgh 100% over this gear wrench. They're great tools. If you're putting it in a garage, maybe a much better place for it. If it's something you're carrying with it, I, it's not the right toolkit. It's not worth the money. 
All right, so we're going to go ahead and get these out of the way. And we are going to talk about the $1,000 starter toolbox. This is a Yukon tool chest from Harbor Freight. When I bought it, it was $350. I then bought just some organizers, a plier set that didn't fare too well. The ones that have these nuts for the slip joint adjustables, these go, well, they would go there, but as you can tell, just that toss, it broke apart. And just some other small miscellaneous set that set us to just about $1,000. And my whole goal with that was to see, can you go to Harbor Freight as an entry mechanic, as a home mechanic, as a hobbyist, and get a good tool set? Now, anyone at a dealership, a shop, you've got tool trucks that come by very regularly. I enjoyed those mobile candy stores a whole lot, and in my career before YouTube, I spent nearly $200,000 between a Mack truck, a Cornwell truck, a Snap-on truck, and a Macco truck. So I'm very experienced in buying tools. So I feel like I've got a fairly good opinion on what makes a good tool, what doesn't make a good tool, what is a good buy, and what you should avoid. So as I got this all put together and into the toolbox, I promised to make this my primary tool set. I was gonna work out of this as much as I could over the really expensive pink and black Matco toolboxes that you've seen and all of the tools in it. And I feel like I've done a very good job of it. And I'll be honest, I have not been nice to this thing. This top is heavily scarred. I have used it as a anvil. Um, I've set it on fire a couple times inadvertently. I have not taken care of this. I have been as abusive and mean to this thing as I possibly could because I wanted to break it. I wanted to make this thing not perform very well, so that way I can tell you, in absolute worst case, it doesn't hold up. Well, it's, it's held up. A lot of you commented and confirmed that this is a real wood top. It's a common thing that's actually really good at uh, recycling and avoiding waste, and it's, it's done well. It's, it's very nicked up, it's damaged, it's had brake fluid on it, it's had brake cleaner sprayed on it, and it, it's held up. My biggest negative that I'll be honest is this top drawer, you know, and some of the drawer spacing is weird. Uh, it's hard to fit some of the organizers into it. You couldn't get a good screwdriver organizer in it, but it's been a really good toolbox. I probably would want to get one of their generals or a little bit nicer, um, smaller roll cart versus this toolbox. The drawer spacing's a little bit normal, so you can get organization going a little better, but, I, that's the most negative I can say about it. It's done really well. I'm impressed with it. If you're looking for something to start with, this isn't a terrible buy at all. Um, we'll go into our socket drawer here. Now added to the socket drawer from the initial set, I've got a Pittsburgh half inch ratchet. I think that's $19. Dwayne will put the actual price up. Um, and I tracked down some of these speed wrenches. I don't use them much, I just like them and they were on clearance where I got all three sizes for like five bucks. That's not a normal deal. These sockets have done unbelievably well. I've used them with impact guns, which you are not supposed to do, and uh, disclaimer, don't do it. I know you're going to, but don't. I've also added in some of the larger Allen drives because I've needed it a few times and it wasn't in the initial set, but um, the sockets have socketed. They've done really well. I haven't broken any of the ratchets yet. Again, really good buy. I will say you can tell some of the uh, Metal isn't the best. They've got a little bit of surface rust forming on them. Um, you can combat that with some WD-40 spray. One thing I would very quickly replace, these uh, spark plug sockets are incredibly annoying. The rubber inside that's designed to hold your spark plugs in them, it keeps coming out. Um, it's been very frustrating, so that's something I've gone to the main toolbox and gotten my magnet set. I do know they offer the sets that have the solid magnet inserts in it. It's just a lot better than this rubber, especially if you ever are doing a BMW, Toyota, anything that's had a lot of oil leaking around the spark plug, that makes the boots come out very quickly. Another thing I added to the socket drawer were some impact sockets, because again, you really should not drive the chrome sockets with an impact gun. They can break and they're brittle. One of the big major differences is the impact socket tends to be a slightly softer metal and it's also thicker, it just has more mass. So when the hammers of your impact gun drive, it transfers more mass into the fastener. Also the metal being a little bit softer, they tend not to shatter quite like a chrome socket. When a impact socket breaks, they tend to split, 
where a chrome socket will split and shatter off as well as have that chrome flake that will slice your finger very badly. So uh, I've got four different varieties of the Pittsburgh Impact sockets, which was about $120. They're usually $30 each. Keep, them, keep an eye out for them to go on sale. Now, some of the tools that I did grab on the ratchet side from the big toolboxes. One is my skinny half inch drive on this end, 3 8 drive on the far end. I love this for pulling transmissions and any other time that you've got a really tight clearance. It just does a good job at it. Most of the other half inch drive um, with socket side being 3 8 tend to be a half inch shaft. Those are better for not losing torque, but sometimes the skinny shafts work better. That's what I've been told. The other thing that I've gone and grabbed a fair bit is just my big breaker bar and half inch ratchet. I will say the chrome is flaking on the Matco uh, breaker bar, so it doesn't matter the name on it. There's going to be quality control issues and, and problems that happen with the tools. Um, again, half inch ratchet. These are things that you can go and get from Harbor Freight. I've already got them. So I just didn't go buy them. Uh, the other ones that I've used a fair bit are just my bigger and longer fine tooth uh, ratchets. Again, you can get these, I think, both in Quinn and Icon from Harbor Freight. I've already got them, so I didn't go rebuy them. So roughly on the table and with the sockets, we're up about another $225 um, from the initial purchase in sockets and drivers and things if you were to buy the equivalent from Harbor Freight. So now we'll move down to our wrenches. Ooh, wrenches. Um, the organizers from Harbor Freight, they've worked fairly well. They're a little bit grabby because I think they're meant to be a little more portable than just sitting in a toolbox. One thing I'm not the biggest fan on the open end side of the wrenches is they don't have any type of positive torque lock. Mako has some uh, flank drive from Snap-on where there's some teeth kind of built into the open end. It helps keep you from rounding fasteners. Otherwise, they've been good. The ratcheting wrenches, they've all held up. The two wrenches that I most commonly would get out of the big toolbox, one are, uh, I can't even remember, socket ends. I don't know. They have basically a small socket on the end, and they just work really good for some tight spaces. Um, I've not seen these on the Harbor Freight website, so I don't know if there's a direct comparable but that is something I've gone and gotten. The other thing, which I know they have, are these longer close-end ratcheting wrenches. Um, I will tell you from experience, it does not matter whose name is on this wrench. If you start breaking your fasteners loose with the ratcheting side, you're going to break it. I've broken Matco. I've broken Snap-on. The way you keep from breaking this ratcheting mechanism, use the uh, non-ratcheting side to get it loose, and then flip it over and spin them off on the ratcheting side. But overall, the wrenches have been very good. The Crescent wrench adjusts and adjusts and does what it's supposed to. I can't complain there. Again, those are what I've grabbed out of the main box, but, you know, wrenches, wrench. All right, below our wrenches, we have got screwdriver chaos and plier less chaos. And I'll be honest, just for the most part, I've not used a ton of the Pittsburgh pliers. I have used the uh, precision ones a fair bit, but just kind of out of habit, I've just gone to my plier drawer. So I'll be honest, I have not really given the Pittsburgh pliers more of a chance. We have a history. But another thing I did grab that I've dropped in with my pliers are just a small precision hook and a pick set. These are great for O-rings or just scraping little crevices. They, they work great. They're not very expensive. I think it was $5. They go on sale quite a bit. So that makes up that drawer. On the screwdriver drawer side, they're screwdrivers. They all work well. I've not had problems with them slipping. I did also just throw in, I had bought several sets of just screwdrivers from Harbor Freight over the years for all the different car trek road trips. So they've been thrown in there. So that's why it's extra messy there. Um, Allen wrenches have all worked well. That's been just a very good drawer, no problems. Below that, we've got my extra impact sockets that I bought. Down here is just the mess drawer of all the pliers and stuff that I've thrown in and sockets and stuff from all the different years of car trek. Oh, hey, there's a 13 to replace the tool set. Nice. But 
I'm not gonna add this to the cost because it's just been something I've thrown together. So that's what I've added to the tool set. You know, we're still under 1500 ish dollars if we added in everything I kind of regularly would go to. And what have I built with it? Well, we've done the Transcon van, we've worked on our drag racing build, we've worked on the cop car, we've worked on the project we can't tell you about yet. I've done several engine stuff just off camera. I've done some of my own projects. I have used this as much as I can here in Georgia for six months straight. And I can confidently say, if you are starting off in a shop, your $1,000 is way better spent with Harbor Freight when it comes to quality and affordability than you'll ever get on a tool truck. I'll be honest, it's easy to fall into that $15 to $20 a week trap that they get you with. Most of those purchases on the tool trucks do go on your truck account, which is just a independent contractor of the big companies where they basically are giving you interest-free loans. So it helps out a little bit, but you're paying for it in the cost of the tool. There's markups made from the manufacturer to the distributor to the truck guy. Everyone has to make money along the way. But a question you guys may have is, what would a something comparable cost you from a tool truck? Now, it's not fair for me to compare Snap-on and Matco as those are their premium lines. It's going to be Silver Eagle and Blue Point. Those are kind of their second tier because this is predominantly Quinn, which is kind of the second tier brand from Harbor Freight. Well, first off, I'm gonna bring out one part number I found looking. It's from Snap-on, it is Snap-on branded, but it is like 111 pieces and it's $4,500 marked as the apprentice tool set. You get a crappy tape measure, a hammer, a flashlight, and a very basic socket set. You're paying more than $45 a piece for this tool set. And that's just robbery. And the fact that it's marked as an apprentice set, I am sure there is some, something somewhere negotiated that if you're gonna apprentice through a particular program, you have to buy that. And that's, that is wrong. The most comparable thing that you can buy from Harbor Freight compared to that Snap-on is less than $120. And you get almost the exact same tools. No argument will ever justify $4,500 for that tool set. I don't care what apprentice you are, you should not have to just immediately spend $4,500 when there is no value there. If it was some thousand piece tool set, I could see it, but it is literally the most basic home tool. My soapbox got ruined. My, the camera went dead in the middle of that. Um, but again, there's, there's no justifiable reason to sell a hundred piece tool kit for $4,500. So let's move on to real comparisons. I, I've got some spreadsheets here that I looked at. So Blue Point, which again is the overseas made tool set from uh, Snap-on. And I'll be honest, I kind of got so irritated at the prices, I quit trying to find kits. They don't have anything quite as comprehensive and starter for less than $4,500 from Snap-on, which is not comprehensive and starter at all. But if you were to buy a basic socket set, a socket wrench set, and a half inch set, under the Blue Point name, your $370, $670, and then $710. So that's $1,700 to get your sockets and very few wrenches from the Blue Point line on the tool truck for $20 a week. Then you need your toolbox and your... Guys, please, I've spent so much money on tool trucks. I was 18 years old. I like the bright and shiny. Um, and if we're being honest, when we go back to when I was 18 years old, Harbor Freight didn't have the quality of tools they have today. So you're able to make much, much better financial choices than I did. I've, I made a lot of questionable choices when I was younger. So that's one big option for you. Um, get on the tool truck, buy everything you need Blue Point, And by the time you get the toolbox and everything, you're realistically about $3,000, which most of the guys are not going to want to put on a truck account, which means you're buying Snap-on Financial, which they'll approve just about anyone at an absurd amount of interest. So you end up paying $6,000 for your tools. I've done it. I, I'm speaking from experience. You don't want to do that. Um, if you jump on your Matco tool truck, um, now I'm not including Mac, Cornwell, or any of the independents just because they didn't have a website. Now granted, Snap-on and Matco's websites are terrible. They're really meant to drive you onto that truck. Um, 
similar thing with Matco when you're buying the Silver Eagle, their import brand, um, they don't have a good comprehensive set similar to the Quinn. So by the time you get half inch, some socket drivers and wrench and their basic set, you get some redundancies, but they're about 600, 593 and 536. So again, $1,700, get a toolbox or tool cart and you're $3,000 right away. If you are just starting out in this career as a professional, take it from someone who's professional. When I say a professional, I was one of Toyota's youngest master diagnostic technicians ever. I was 20 years old when I earned that certification. I was ASC master from before 19, hybrid certified, helped do fireman training when the Priuses first came out. I've got a long history of using tools. So this, this is me kind of being heartfelt with you guys. I don't care if you go to Harbor Freight. They've given me zero dollars for this. They gave me one set of the Pittsburgh and they gave me the welders. I'll be upfront and honest with that. They offered to send me some replacement pliers, but they're not improved yet. So I don't want them because they're still bad. You can go and get a Husky set. You can get a Sonic set for a little bit more money. I'm, I'm opening another website. Um, the Husky thousand piece set, which is pretty dang comprehensive. That's $1,750 from the Home Depot. There's a clutch set, but realistically the clutch set looks very similar to what you're getting from the Quinn, 566 pieces. That's $1,000. There's a Craftsman master set, which is a little bit more comprehensive than what we had in the, uh, um, well, not a little bit, a lot more comprehensive than what you can get from uh, the gear master set. And that's $230 online. Uh, Tang tools, which we've used at Freddy's. They're a good quality tool, different hand feel, um, but their big roll cart or toolbox, bigger than this one, with full tools, everything you really need to get started and then some, they're $4,600. Um, so about what you would pay for a couple hundred sockets on a tool truck. Oh, here's that $800 or 800 piece tool set from Amazon, don't buy that one. Um, you, you've got so many options in today's world. If you're starting this off as a career, I get it. There's a lot of prestige. I told myself a lot that most people don't know what a good tool makes as a customer, but if they see a Snap-on or a Matco box, they're like, oh, that guy knows what he's doing. Their marketing has stayed targeted within mechanics. The general public don't care about Snap-on, Matco, Clutch, uh, icon, they don't know the difference anymore. So don't buy a toolbox for a customer. Buy it for what you need. I don't care if you go into Harbor Freight. I don't care if you go into Home Depot, Lowe's, uh, Northern Tool. They've got offerings that are way better value than you will ever get from a tool truck. I will say this, I, I used to only buy Snap-on, then I started buying Matco. In the shops, the relationship with the tool truck drivers are very valuable. Uh, Daniel Deadweiler, Greg, my Snap-on rep, fantastic people. Uh, Alan, my other Matco rep, great people that I had a great relationship with that helped out a lot just kind of during personal struggles. But that was a person, not a tool company. Um, I'm not gonna say you should never buy something from a tool truck, but really think long and hard about the better value. Soapbox time over. The question was, could you spend $1,000 and get everything you need to start off as a mechanic. And yes, yes you can. Learn from my questionable choices. I'm Jared, reminding you guys to always make questionable choices, except for when it comes to tool purchases. Save that money so you can buy more car parts and go fast. We'll see you.